Thank you very much. <clears throat> Hoping everyone can hear me okay. Um, first of all, I just want to thank the organisers of today's event for inviting me to speak today. Um, it's a real privilege to be asked. I'm currently, as, as I was introduced, the lead for Violence Against Women in Dundee and have been covering some of the Child Protection Committee work during the pandemic as well. I do feel like I've reached some dizzying heights by being asked to speak today from my, my historical background working with Five Women's Aid back many years ago. So thank you again for inviting me to speak. I was asked to talk about how we have developed a collective leadership approach in Dundee within the context of our protecting people's structure and agenda. And I'm certainly not here to present a perfect picture. We still have much work to do in Dundee. However, there are some elements that I can confidently say that we've done quite well, and hopefully the examples that I'm going to share with you today will be useful. The starting point is probably the fact that the Violence Against Women Girls Work and Violence Against Women Partnership are located firmly within the Protecting People structure in Dundee, and there's been strong commitment and support for this over a number of years. The Dundee Violence Against Women Partnership reports directly to the Chief Officers Group and also has direct links with Child Protection, Adult Protection Committees, the Alcohol and Drugs Partnership and the MAPA. And the strategic support team for the partnerships and committees is also located together as one team. And this has huge benefits for communication, for developing a cross-cutting approach and the sharing of developments and ideas. I'm going to talk in some detail about one example of a successful collective leadership approach to violence against women, briefly touch on some other examples, present some of the challenges faced and briefly reflect on the impact of COVID-19 in relation to collective leadership. Before I move on, I just want to make a brief disclaimer that my slides are probably a reflection of where I am mentally in relation to the pandemic. I don't know about you, but I have reached the point where cartoon visuals and light humour are the level of functioning that I can cope with. I wouldn't normally approach a presentation like this as informally as I am, but wherever I am these days and whoever I speak to, I hear that people are weary. It's been a long year and I'm sure everyone on this uh, meeting today is no different. So for that reason, I decided a lighter touch might be welcome, despite the seriousness of the topic. Um, Joe, I think there's a few things to come up on that slide. Yeah, there we go. One more click. There we go. So the first example I'm going to give is an area of development which has been both deliberate and organic in its evolution. It was and still is a journey which is far from complete, but hopefully demonstrates how collective leadership around violence against women and girls can bring about huge benefits and positive change. The history of this particular example goes back years. However, I've only got 10 minutes, so I'm just going to rewind back to 2018. At this time, the Dundee Violence Against Women Partnership began to review pathways for women affected by violence and multiple disadvantage in the city from a whole systems perspective. The slides demonstrate how we felt at that time. Can I have the next slide, please? A couple more clicks. So the group undertook a review and redesign of existing pathways. Um, and some of the key issues that we identified were similar to some of the things that have already been brought up in the presentations today. So we thought there was a lack of resources to provide consultation for wider non-specialist services. There was difficulty meeting the needs of women with multiple and complex needs. There was a lack of structured violence against women training and workforce development opportunities. And all of this led to increasing pressure on specialist services and a strain on their resources. After a lot of discussion, we agreed that con consultancy and capacity building in mainstream statutory services were the areas of work which could bring about the most lasting and impactful change, as well as reducing the pressure on specialist services. And at the same time as this review process was happening, a number of other transformation activities were ongoing in Dundee, including substance use and homeless services. And a separate working group had been set up under the ADP and the Homelessness Strategic Planning Groups to look at the needs of vulnerable women more broadly. Okay, the next slide, please. It was around the same time that the Dundee Drugs Commission was published, and the Commission report gave a clear message and recommendations about the importance of gendered approaches. It made the re recommendation that we had to ensure that the needs of women who experience problems with drugs are assessed and addressed via adoption of gender mainstreaming and gender sensitive approaches to service planning. 
Yeah. The action plan for change, Dundee's response to the Commission, contained clear actions and priorities in relation to this recommendation, and these were then discussed with and delegated to a Violence Against Women Partnership subgroup, which I will come back to shortly. Can you have the next slide, please? Again, at the same time, um, there was research commissioned in Dundee to look at the needs of women. And this was funded through the Scottish Government Challenge Fund. Um, and the funding was secured by Dundee Women's Aid. Again, the research made some clear recommendations of around services and responses to women and changes that needed to happen in order to meet their needs more effectively. Can the next slide, please? So all of these strands came together in the merging of the Violence Against Women Pathways group that I was talking about previously and the ADP and Homelessness group, which had also been formed. These groups merged to become the Gendered Services Group, which reports directly now to the Violence Against Women Partnership and the ADP and has been operating for about a year. The collective leadership flowing from the Violence Against Women Partnership and the ADP expanded our ability to tackle the issues faced by women, the most vulnerable women in our city, and it opened up huge possibilities for collaborative working at a strategic and operational level. The main aim of the Gender Services Group is to lead the strategic and operational planning for gender sensitive and trauma informed services in Dundee for women experiencing violence against women, substance use, homelessness and a range of other complex issues and also includes a strong focus on women with lived experience directing our work. The membership of the group includes violence against women specialist agencies but also a wide range of non-specialist agencies as well. And what we had at this point of the Gender Services Group coming together was the Violence Against Women Pathways Group identifying the need to upskill and build capacity in universal mainstream statutory and non-specialist services. The ADP and homelessness sector also recognising the need to improve their response to women and the Commission and the research making very similar recommendations. So this gave us a really strong basis for moving forward. Can I have the next slide please? So the group, as I said, has been operating for around a year and some of the key achievements of the group have been the development of a women's services booklet. And this sounds fairly basic, developing a booklet, but it followed quite an extensive mapping of services, which included the specialist violence against women services, but also those which were not violence against women specialists, but had an element of women only service and therefore represented the gendered approach that we were aiming to achieve. And the slide that you have up there shows a wheel that we developed, which um, demonstrates the mapping that we did with the specialist level one services in the middle and then the wider services with specific women only elements um, in the second tier of the circle. We also were successful in securing a funding bid um, for a two year post, which is now um, hosted within the Protecting People team. And the aim of this post, this project, is to develop a gendered approach across mainstream services in Dundee. We've had that post filled now for about a couple of months, so it's very early days. But the, the main sort of focus of that, that project is to go out to non specialist services, mainstream statutory services, and work with them to identify how well are they doing or not doing in terms of having a gendered approach, develop a organisational checklist, self-assessment that can be used, and then once areas for development are identified, work with those services to implement changes, whether that be training, policy reviews, whatever it is that's needed. They also intend to deliver training, to develop a network of champions to ensure the work carries on after the project is finished. Um, and provide good practice examples and a range of tools that organisations can take on board. And an element of that project will also be working at strategic level to do the same thing, ensure that a gendered approach is embedded. So we're really excited about that project. Um, we've also developed um, briefing presentations and documents which representatives on the Gender Services Group are taking back to their own teams and networks, spreading the word of the work of the group and why it's needed. And at strategic level, we've seen the inclusion of, of a commitment to a gendered approach in a number of plans, including the ADP strategic plan and the adult support and protection delivery plan. So that's really fantastic to see that happening already. My observations of the success of the Gender Services Group are around the bringing together of violence against women specialist agencies, but also those who have a broader remit or a different focus, for example, the substance use services. 
As we've worked together, we've built a sense of teamwork and shared vision and outcomes. And at times, and at times I suspect that the violence against women world can feel like something of a scary and specialised club, um, which other services may not feel they have a place within or see that they have a place within. But this group has seen that change and there's a really strong motivation and commitment and drive to work together to improve the lives of the most vulnerable women in Dundee. And I think as, as we've been going through the, the presentations today, I've been frantically scribbling and causing absolute carnage with my notes because I'm seeing the, sort of the links back to some of the things that have been said in other presentations. So I think this links to what Lucy said in her presentation about how services work together and see violence against women as their responsibility, even if they're not a specialist violence against women agency. Can we have the next slide, please? So yeah, this is my little blowing of the trumpet. So the Gender Services Group is a specific example, which um, I have just taken you through very quickly. But I'm just going to briefly touch on some of the other examples of good collective leadership, which I feel I can see in Dundee. One of the key ones is the Transforming Public Protection Programme, which has been ongoing in Dundee for over a year now. Um, this is a programme which does what it says on the tin. It's looking to transform public protection and is aiming to move us away from an unwieldy, siloed structure and ways of working to a more integrated protecting people approach. COVID-19 has got in the way of some of the developments we were hoping to achieve, but at the same time, it's also accelerated some of our thinking and brought rapid pace change in the direction that we'd hope to achieve. An example of this it's a development of an integrated protecting people risk register that was very quickly mobilised when lockdown began. And what this has enabled us to do is to understand the shared risks across the protecting people committees and also work collectively on our responses to these risks. COVID particularly has brought the risks around violence against women and girls and particularly domestic abuse and prostitution to the fore. And this is reflected in the risk register with highlighted risks around these issues in the Child Protection Committee, Violence Against Women Partnership, ADP, and adult support and protection sections of the document. An example of a shared response is the speed at which children and family services in Dundee undertook a thorough cross-referencing and risk rating exercise across all their known service users and historical cases where domestic abuse had been a factor to ensure that the most vulnerable families were targeted for support when lockdown began. And that also included a cross-referencing with community justice services to ensure that perpetrators were truly included in that picture. Okay, the next slide, please. So as I said, it's a work in progress. And despite a lot of development around collective leadership and work to progress our response to violence against women, we have faced challenges, as I'm sure everybody does. Some of these are around the significant demand on services, which depletes capacity available for development and improvement work, with managers and executives and frontline services unable to dedicate the time that they would want to to strategic development. And that's really critical because they are the experts in the field and we really, really need them around the table. The added pressures of COVID-19 have also impacted and despite all the benefits, there's no doubt that the pandemic has affected our ability to progress in some areas of work. And it's meant we've had to shift focus and put our energy into responding to the pandemic. There are also some issues relating to funding which have an impact on collective leadership. But I'm just gonna to briefly touch on those now. Have the next slide. So the funding climate around violence against women does present challenges for us and I'm just going to touch on a few points. Um, some of that is around the fact that a high proportion of the funding locally sits outside of local partners and done the year around 75%. So this limits our ability to use strategic commissioning and procurement approaches to progress change. There's a heavy reliance on insecure external funding streams for some of the core specialist violence against women services and obviously the majority of that specialist provision sits in the third sector. So that creates an insecurity in the system. Um, as I've already touched on, there's a reduced sort of capacity for people in the specialist services to influence strategic direction and planning. Managing multiple funding streams reduces the time rate available they have and also creates an environment for staff in these agencies which is never fully secure. None of this is conducive to a sustained collective approach as services are perpetually chasing available funding rather than working collaboratively and being led by the needs of the city and the women within it. And this can sometimes lead to disjointed services and pathways and competition between agencies as they bid for funding available. Can I have the next slide, please? <clears throat> 
With this in mind, in light of these challenges, um, in Dundee recently, the Violence Against Women Partnership took a paper to our Chief Officers Group, which resulted in them making some really key commitments to the actions that are shown on the slide there. Um, and also for me, this really highlights the commitment to collective leadership that we have in Dundee. I think this links back to Kate Cosgrove's presentation and the comments about the extent to which we are truly prepared to embrace the demands presented by collective leadership around violence against women. And I think in Dundee, we're at the start of a journey with this work in terms of widespread and radical shifts around tackling violence against women and girls. We've had our first meeting with the champions nominated from within the council and NHS, and I sense a real and tangible commitment to improving the situation around violence against women and girls and the funding environment surrounding it. And along with the work of the Gender Services Group, I'm really hopeful that we have the ingredients to build on all the progress that we've made to date. Can I have the next slide, please? <clears throat> so to summarise what I've covered in this presentation, which has been very brief and a quick run through, um, I thought I'd pull together what I feel on reflection has been the key components to some of our successes in working collaboratively and collectively around violence against women. So these are being open to and embracing external scrutiny and review, and then being reflective and constructive in response to criticism, being willing to learn and develop new approaches and having an openness to change, having a shared recognition of shared risks and opportunities to respond collectively to these risks. So moving away from the siloed working that we, we speak about all the time, and understanding that that can be messy and challenging, but that the benefits are absolutely huge. And I think the one that stands out the most for me is developing a sense of team around violence against women and girls, bringing people together to see where they fit into the picture and the work that we need to do to tackle these issues. Broadening out from the specialist agencies and violence against women focus to include all women who are facing difficulties, barriers and vulnerabilities. So I hope this has been a useful whiz through of some of the work in Dundee and thank you very much for listening to me and for the opportunity to speak today.